What's up, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Game, your one source for everything cool in video games. You can always be a part of our show. All you have to do is go to insidethegame.ca, where there you can submit your clip and end off our show. You can also follow us over on YouTube at Inside the Game, hit us up on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the official ITG, and of course, join our growing community over on Discord. Now, what's up on this week's show? Well, here it is. It's the rundown. Top three skills in each skill tree in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You and I have been about the only ones from the team playing this game because it's still, honestly, it's kind of more of a, a broken point than break point. I'm left with my melee weapon, even though I just had my gun out and now I might be getting into a gun battle and I'm fumbling with the controller to try to get the, the wheel up to pull my weapon out. That's not a melee weapon. And then I'm getting shot and killed and I'm trying to stand and then run away. And it's the Last of Us is making its rounds around social media all over again because HBO's production has confirmed that Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey will both be joining the project. Well, there it is. That's the rundown. So let's get started. Corey and I hit the apocalypse. Well, Corey, let's see if we can survive this review. This is strange. Corey, you and I jumped over on Steam into a post-apocalyptic game called Potentia, and we've been down this road before. Basically, what's happened is an explosion kind of goes off in the environment and wipes out almost everybody. You know, typical from a post-apocalyptic uh, point of view, but some people that evaporated and then others just didn't, and you... that's, that's kind of the, the setup of the game. And then a few events happened along the way, but overall, Corey, I got to be honest, dude, this one was a struggle to play. There's a lot of issues here. The game still, it says work in progress. It's very much a still work in progress title, but it's it's been difficult to get through. It's, it's not a long game by any means. It's only eight episodes. I got to six and then got a kind of a bug and it just broke the game. And I've had to re restart the game three times to play it. So it's been a, a bit of a punishing go how, how have you made out <laughs> well you know what let's kind of start off with how this all started for us you you sent me over the trailer and we got to look at this game. yeah potentia it the trailer looked really cool it kind of had this you know division two last of us kind of vibes right like you're kind of yep. roaming around the streets there's you know cars and litter scattered everywhere it's kind of you know this bit of a wasteland and you're kind of moving through and it looks really good. The trailer make this game look really, really good. You know, there's some yeah. combat involved in the trailer, so you kind of get a feel for a little bit of everything. And then you jump into this game, and you start to notice pretty quickly here that that little sign in the top left corner of the screen that says work in progress really means this is a work in progress because holy cow, it was, it was difficult to get into. Let's just say <laughs> the environment, you know, when you first get into the game, looks you know really good actually i think that the overall environment you know kind of is what immerses you in this game but then you start focusing on kind of everything else and you start realizing kind of where some of the holes are here like you know we look at some of the character models especially the main character it seems yeah, very kind of blocky and chunky and it's just you're, you're just hoping for a little bit more because you kind of see how the environment looks and you kind of hope that you know the rest of the graphics follow suit and, you know, it doesn't really matter how nice the environments look if they're empty, e whether it be yeah. there's not enough enemies or there's just no items. I mean, you walk into a grocery store and the shelves are all empty other than two boxes of pistol ammo and then a grenade on a shelf, you know, farther down in one of the aisles. And it's just, it seemed like there was just some balancing issues here with this game like they wanted to put out a game that had you know a kind of an interesting story whether it be you know a story that we've kind of seen done before in the past they did their own spin on it so you kind of have to appreciate it here but i had a tough time getting over these voiceovers man like oh my yeah, goodness Corey. there's a bit of a disconnect here as far as translation is concerned but and, and you, you can't fault them on that but it's just like it was tough because it's 
the the voices and everything just kind of don't match what you're looking at on screen. Well, I was looking for my wife. I was looking for help, and he brought me here. Maybe you know where they're taking the people they captured. I have no use for you. I am just a man hiding here. Oh man, the voice acting was just killer. It was so off-putting in the game. It doesn't match the characters. The the voice over itself doesn't line up with the mouth sinking. So there's none of that either to make it even worse on top of that. But the voice actors, I don't think are actual voice actors. I think that's part of the issue, no. to be honest. You know what I mean? So when you're when you're trying to tell an environmental story game like this, an action adventure with a heavy emphasis semi on the story you need to have well voice acted characters and these characters are just off-putting <sighs> nothing they're broken honestly the the voiceover is kind of broken in parts it's uh the one character you run he's kind of like a he helps you along the way but he's just he's supposed to be witty and he's not he's more of a yeah. <laughs> right? So it's just, it's, it just doesn't match what they're trying to go for here. The AI itself was just incomprehensible. Like they're, fl when they walk, they're actually floating across the screen. It's not smooth. <laughs> it's not fluid. Combat was all over the place. When you, you're talking about the environments, right? They say search in the environment and it'll help you survive. When you search an empty environment is the problem. It's supposed to be set that way to, to an extent, but there's nothing really to explore. You find ammo, health packs, and grenades. That is really about it. What else am I going to look for? Nothing. I shoot somebody, and I'll pick up his ammo. That's kind of what I did, right? Yeah. Stealth doesn't really work. To me, it seems like the developers were, you know what? I like The Last of Us. I like The Division. I like Assassin's Creed. I like Splinter Cell because there's this nice scene with the whole goggles. And go, like, you get the whole sound effect and everything. <laughs> Dude, it was just... When they tried to mash it to all together and it just didn't work they really needed to go you know what we want to make this kind of game and let's focus on that instead of pulling from everywhere over here and there and then it's just oh dude i i just it ended my game and i i had a hard time i'm obviously you know struggling not to be too bashing on the game but it's just there's so many issues with this game it's not ready no uh, completely as simple as that is it is not ready yeah, I'm just going to add in real quick. I got to give them credit that you played on mouse and keyboard. I found out yeah. there's also controller support. So I hopped in on and started playing on controller. There's definitely some issues with the control layouts as far as, you know, just how you, you know, operate your item wheel and things like that. So it's it was nice to be able to play a game like this, especially a third person, you know, shooter or adventure shooter that in this perspective with a controller because again i'm terrible with mouse and keyboard so it was nice yeah sure. but the way your character moves around the environment it feels like you have a <laughs> box around you you have a box around you the enemies yeah. have a box around them everything you interact with has a box around it and it's just you feel that when you're playing this game so we you feel like a controller should make the movements a little more fluid and you know should be a little bit easier to pick up and switch your shoulder camera angles and things like that but it sure. really didn't make my experience any more seamless. And I found, honestly, once you get into the combat and the gunplay, the oh, best part clunky. was doing a stealth takedown because it's a little kind of played out cut yeah. scene where you whip out your melee weapon and you take their legs out and, you know, bash them over the head. And they did actually, that was done really well. Like it was, it was cool to yep. kind of see because it's like, you know, partially slow motion. And so it was kind of nice to see that added in. But then as soon as that's done, I'm left with my melee weapon, even though I just had my gun out and now I might be getting into a gun battle and i'm fumbling with the controller to try to get the the wheel up to pull my weapon out that's not a melee weapon and then i'm getting shot and killed and i'm trying to stand and then run away and it's <laughs> you know it, it turned into a mess real quick and when the, yeah. things aren't happening fluidly whether it be with the controls or just the way you move around the environment it makes it a lot more difficult to progress through even though like you said it's not an overly long story here but there's a lot no. of things that are going to want to kind of try to hold you back as you make your way through no, absolutely. The game's probably around three hours long, to be honest. If you can get to episode eight, it, I got halted at episode six. I cleared out the area, did everything I was supposed to, and then that was it. Um, I ran into a stair issue. I went down the stairs, and it would not let me back up the stairs. So I couldn't get back out to the front of the house and into this little cul-de-sac area. You know, it just restarting my game three times 
is you know it happens there there obviously things happen but in this instance dude it was just everything was just breaking down as i went further and further along and it was tough you get into certain enemies where you fight and you know one shot perfect they go down a simple headshot works this dude shows up with a helmet i gotta unload my shotgun my yeah. pistol my bow and arrows and then i'm still looking for ammo to kill this guy i'm like like the guy's not invincible like come on so you know just again back to balancing issues right there's just dude there's so many unfortunate things going on right now it should just it's it's rough it just needs a little bit more work i think they have a solid foundation mm -hmm. but there's still a lot more work that needs to go into this thing before actually setting it out to the wild i agree Corey, as I said, I had to come to a grinding halt. Unfortunately, I wanted to finish it. I just couldn't finish it. Just through some technical bugs going on within the game. And besides the, you know what? The environmental artists, I think, did a fantastic job. Some of the audio and ambience within the game, I thought was really well done as well. But the voiceover is just absolutely horrendous. And the, there's just other issues too with gun mechanics, you know, gameplay itself. It just there's too many things here going on for me that just weren't working the way a, a way more polished game would and unfortunately puts me out of two man you know what i i can't argue with any of those points drew this game i think has the right idea and i think that's what drew us to it um yeah but the execution isn't quite there yet not to say that this game can't be smoothed out they are admitting that it is a work in progress but uh, you know a nice environment nice environmental audio isn't what's going to keep me even in a, a three to four hour experience and i have to have that gameplay and you know there's so many other games out there that do this but so much better it's tough to give this any more than a three great idea for a game but unfortunately the execution was not there weak voice acting and clunky controls will make this short play feel much longer GTA 5 publisher Take-Two Interactive has just come out with their quarterly financial results and let me tell you they've sold over 140 million copies of Grand Theft Auto 5 since launch in 2013 and 2020 was their biggest year other than the original launch year 2013 for people buying the game which is absolutely insane that's seven years after the original launch of the game you've still got more and more people joining this online community and as someone that's played a ton of grand theft auto online there's so much to do and they don't stop adding to this game and the fact that you know they just keep adding to it is why there's more and more people jumping in every month of 2020 saw more and more people joining as each month went on which is absolutely insane but the best part is is the fact that they're also going to be bringing grand theft auto 5 to the next gen consoles. That means you'd be able to play Grand Theft Auto if you bought it back in 2013 through three console generations, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and now Xbox Series X, which is absolutely wild because the fact that you can even think that a game would even be able to last that long is crazy. And the, you know, they've done such a good job here with the online community. The fact that there's so much to do there's there's no reason to get bored here there's always something else to be doing the fact that you can jump in with your friends you know the green versus purple alien battle was something that rockstar and take two didn't even come up with it was the community that generated this so the fact that grand theft auto 5 is going to be coming to the next gen consoles is awesome it makes me a little wary to think when we're going to be getting grand theft auto 6 but honestly 140 million copies i think they know what they're doing The Last of Us is making its rounds around social media all over again because HBO's production has confirmed that Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey will both be joining the project. This is super exciting because Pedro, of course, comes from The Mandalorian, and Bella is known as a young Mormont in Game of Thrones. We don't know too much about this series so far, but having these characters cast as Joel and Ellie 
certainly makes this seem like it's gonna be another smash hit for HBO. If you've already picked up a PlayStation 5, you might already be experiencing some problems with the controller. As the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller is apparently having the same drift issues that were reported in Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. In 2019, Nintendo acknowledged the issue with the Joy-Con and announced a new policy that offered owners free repairs and refunds for prior repairs. Last year, Nintendo's president formally apologised for the whole incident as they were aware of the flaw on release which prompted a US law firm, Chimicals, Swartz, Kreiner and Donaldson Smith to file a class action lawsuit against Nintendo for Joy-Con drift. Well, they have now set up a questionnaire page asking PS5 owners to report instances of drift or if the console registers stick inputs even if the controller isn't being touched. At the moment, the options for fixing your busted dual sets is going to be tough as you can go through the Sony's PlayStation support page but bearing in mind that the PlayStation support team are swamped at the moment filled in requests for where to find the next PlayStation 5. Alright we got big news come from Ubisoft and this is in regards to Rainbow Six Siege. They've hit over 70 million players. Now this game, it came back out in late 2015. So in five years, just a little bit longer than that, to have hit 70 million players, wow, this is incredible. I still play this game quite religiously, and to be honest and to be fair, they update this very regularly. Back in December, they did a huge update on PS5 and the Series X that gave it 120 frames per second and just an overall little slight graphic fidelity increase. But enough talk about Rainbow Six Siege, because yes, that is exciting, but what about this Rainbow Six Quarantine game? Yeah, we haven't heard much about this for a while, and we finally got some news. It is, in fact, delayed. What a shocker, just like most big games nowadays. But they did say that it is coming out later this year, so I'll predict, I don't know, November, like when it's the broke timber, maybe, broke November time I don't know that's what I'm predicting this game comes out like all the other big titles so by the end of the year will we get Rainbow Six Quarantine well not exactly because they aren't really sure if they want to use that name nowadays with everything that's going on you know COVID and the whole pandemic I think they're gonna change the name and they kind of they put an article out saying that yeah we uh, don't think we're gonna keep the same title so moving forward I don't know what it's gonna be called I don't know what exactly they're gonna do to change it but at any rate I'm super excited for this game to come out later this year Okay, Corey, so we talk a lot about esports on this show and just the overall growth of it. But something that's come up more recently and some insane numbers is the betting side of esports. Now, I actually was pretty unfamiliar with this, but you actually had some really interesting points and kind of a little history lesson to give us. So let's start with that <laughs> you know what esports has been one of these things that's kind of developed rapidly over the last 10 years and betting on esports just like betting on any sport is starting to develop just as quickly and this kind of all started back you know the cs go the dota days and those are still very popular games now but this mm -hmm. is kind of where the betting started and it started kind of with um, third-party websites allowing people to trade in-game currency or in-game skins and they can kind of so, they can bet on CSGO matches and if they lose you know they got to give up the skin that they bet or they win something and they can keep it in their account or they can use it uh, in-game as well which is kind of nice but that's kind of where everything started but the problem there was is that these third-party websites that allowed people to do this were completely unregulated so normally you know uh, to play the lottery whether it's here or in the United States you have to be 18 years of age or older and well if you have an unregulated website that isn't asking people for 
ages, well, then you can get anybody in there betting whatever they want. And unfortunately, gambling is addictive, and it isn't something that you know people under the age of 18 should really be exposed to. So for a while there, esports betting kind of operated in this kind of gray area where you know, like <laughs> it's a you know bet at your own risk kind of situation. But as you know, the times have kind of changed, and especially over the last year with the pandemic, a lot more people are playing games. They're watching people play games. They're watching competitive gaming. So it's only natural that now we're having more options for actually betting on esports. And now that you know we're coming into 2021, there's a handful of legitimate sports books out there that allow you to bet on esports, whether it be CSGO matches, League of Legends matches, Dota's in there as well. So there's a lot of options and, and it's just a straight, you know, you pick the winner, you know, you pick this winning team over this team and there's, there's odds at favor there and it's a little bit different. It's not necessarily as laid out as you know maybe an nfl game would be or an nhl yeah. game would be right where you've got point spreads and things like that like there's a bit of a different environment when it comes to esports right like you kind of need to understand who these players are on these teams and how long they've played these these games these particular ones that they may be in tournaments for you know some teams may be together for five six years but they may have four or five new players so these are all things you have to kind of take into account when you get into or start to look at betting on esports but it is becoming more accessible. And the fact that there's a lot more legitimate sports books out there because they suffered with not having sports in 2020 to bet on, esports really took a front seat. Oh, so man. you start seeing those esports tabs on all these websites to go in and start betting. And it's starting to really ramp up these numbers, man. Like we it, are making a ton of money here. It's really good for just gaming in general man like the fact that it's just more exposure there's a lot of the world somehow that doesn't really know about esports when you know league of legends had over a hundred million people tune into their world championship i think last year or the year before That's wild so you know it's just really great for uh, gaming in general to have this as long as it's regulated like you were talking earlier you know we had some statistics saying that uh, ages 11 to 16 there was like a growth of 50,000 which was quadruple you know for gambling which is it's mind-blowing that there's actually numbers for the ages that young yeah. so and that's they, the they really they need to regulate this because you know gambling or you know, not that gambling is good but when it's regulated it can just really bring a lot of positive energy to uh esports i think yeah, no, for sure, I agree. It needs to be regulated, right? Just like our lotteries and everything we have in place now. Um, you know, gambling is a form of entertainment. It's fun, people enjoy it. And if you can, you know, you can control the addiction, I guess there is, that there is prevalent with gambling, then you can operate and have a perfectly good time, right? But unfortunately, we have a very large group of younger people watching these esports events and you know after you buy you know your favorite team's merch you're looking for other ways to support them or other ways to feel like you're part of the action and betting yeah. is inevitably going to be one of the next options there so the fact that you know we can do it it's awesome i love the fact that there's growth here because competitive gaming is awesome to watch we've been to a couple live events and it's mm -hmm. unbelievable the atmosphere is wild it's not like watching it on the computer it's it's like you're at a real sporting event it is a real sporting event i mean mm -hmm. like you said league of legends world championship you know there's the overwatch tournaments you have a stadium full of people so it's going to be really interesting to see as we move forward in this whole esports realm what other games are going to be added into being allowed to be bet on? Because uh, there's, yeah, you know, there's just the rumblings and the startings of fantasy esports right now, which is wild. I mean, you make a fantasy team of esports players, like we do that with fantasy football and fantasy hockey, right? But it's it, the fact that that's even something that they're starting to develop now is amazing. So honestly, man, moving forward, I know gambling can be that, you know, you're riding that tricky line there, but the fact that it's doing so well with esports and it is starting to take a forefront. People are going to start to realize that esports is just as much a sport as anything else out there. Your world champion, Buda! And let us know what you guys think by heading over to insidethegame.ca or over on our Discord. Let us know what you guys think about betting and gambling in esports.
Steve, is it true? We're heading back to Aurora? Steve, it's not a rumor. We're heading back to Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Because the latest event is out, the DLC is here. We're talking about Amber Ruin. This is the latest expansion in the world of... I can't believe I'm saying this. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Because, Steve, over the past year, you and I have been about the only ones from the team playing this game because it's still... Honestly, it's kind of more of a, a broken point than Breakpoint. That's correct. And I think I'm a sucker for broken games. <laughs> I mean, I know we talk about Ghost Recon, but like Cyberpunk I enjoyed and that was broken as hell. But there's something about this game I just love. I don't know if it's about the open worlds. I've had a few glitches. Sure. Um, but the stories I, I do enjoy. And it, and like the cutscenes and the, like I say, the vehicles, the mechanics of the guns and things, which I'm sure we'll probably talk about a bit yeah. more in, uh, later on. But I do like this game, and um, I'm enjoying this. I do enjoy it, but it's fun, but very frustrating. Well, that's just the time. part, right? It's still frustrating because oh. it's still the same game from launch. That's the problem. I think what they've done is they've got a solid foundation, but they've never fixed the cracks within the foundation of the game. So yes. we're still running into countless bugs. Well, so basically Amber Ruin right now is that when you launch the event and the whole purpose because why we went back to this event is because of Rainbow Six is attached to the event. And if you know ITG, we're massive fans of Rainbow Six. With this event, you earn skins, the skins you're gaining as well as guns. But the skins are what really kind of drew me to it. We get Ash, we get Finca and we get Thatcher. Yeah. You work with these three individuals from Rainbow Six and Legion as the handler of the entire event, but you work with them to figure out what's going on with this Amber Ruin. Amber Ruin is a gas that's been dispersed across Aurora. And we're there to figure out with the help of Ash, Finka, and Thatcher, what's going on, why is it there, and how do we get rid of it? But yes, Steve, it's still, it's still the same old thing. Okay, we start a mission, Steve. Yeah, it, and it's kind of like, sorry, it's kind of like the same kind of thing. Go and speak to someone first, and yeah. then it starts the mission off. And then you go to, like, the other side of the map, That's and then you start the mission. <laughs> and then it's like, and then you know it's going to be some heavy fortress campsite with fully loaded, and you've got to get in there somehow without being detected. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing because I've already seen it as, like, yeah, two hours in and mission failed. But like, yeah. um, it, I find that bit the frustrating part, but do you know what I mean? It, 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 I do like the game, but oh my God, it's frustrating. And I sink so much hours into this and it's <laughs> just like... <laughs> it, it's still the same game from launch. That's what yes. we keep, that's the biggest problem. They haven't t fixed the broken mechanics of the game. We're, I was in one level and one of the people were actually in a crate and they're popping in and out of this crate as I'm trying to go and get this, this mission solved and that kind of stuff. And Ash is there for a purpose. She's supposed to breach the door. You go to the door and hit, so we're on Xbox. I hold Y and she goes, okay, Ash, you're up. All right. So then Ash responds with, okay, let me know when you're ready. Uh, yeah, I'm ready. So how about you go breach the door and nothing happens to the point where both of us, Steve, are throwing a grenade at the door to breach it instead of using Ash. So we have all these abilities with Thatcher, Ash, and Finca, and the only one that's useful is Finca, because if you get shot, she just clicks her button and heals us. It's just, yeah. uh, why is that a thing? Yeah, I don't know. And it, do you know what? And it, to be honest with you, I know this is the third event, and I've had the same issues on the other two events. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's the same kind of repetitive thing. Yes, the story's different, different characters, but the principle is still the same. You still go to one checkpoint, talk to someone to start the mission, sure. then go to the other bit, and then you start. And it's and it is the same kind of thing. And like you said, I had the same issue again, like like you did with the door. Yep, let me know when you're ready. Everybody I kept going has. back and forth. I think I threw a grenade. I think I 
load, unloaded a clip yep. <laughs> at the door, and then all of a sudden I hit Y, and then she come in and done a thing, and it's like Someone's it was so like... quick. Yeah, I, it was too much of a delay to be honest with you on that on that point to progress with the game because I'm running around and I I just didn't know what to do. It, it just gets no. irritating because the thing it should be presented to you at the beginning of the game how these characters are are workable within the mechanics of the game why are they there how do you operate with these characters and there's just no mention of it at all there is a story of this gas that's there and that's a big proponent of this and you know what i kind of found it to be a little odd the fact that we're all in this massive pandemic right now in real world and we're wearing a mask and now we go to Aurora and Ghost Recon and we put on another mask. Like, man, like I think your timing's a little off on this one in particular. But overall, yeah. getting back into it, Steve, I kind of got that bug. Like, I got hooked again getting back into this game. Dude, I'm coming up on 100 hours now in this game. And then it's just like, really? Again, am I coming back to this thing? And it's still facing the same issues. And that's the problem. I think the story's good. The gunplay has always been solid for me. I love the gun mechanic within the game. But it's just the broken parts behind it prevent yeah. me from actually enjoying what I was really hoping would be a fantastic game. Well, the thing is, is like yourself, is the reason why we're clocking up so many hours because I still found, I, unfortunately, I'm still stuck on the third part on this thing, and it's not like from trying. Yeah. It's like when I'm sort of like up at like say six or seven me. in the morning, next thing is one o'clock, and I've not completed the mission because I keep failing the mission, yeah. and it's like. You know, you spend two hours like stealthing and all stuff like that, and then to see one guy see you and it's a mission fails, and it's like, oh my god! And then I try it again, and it and that's the bit I find frustrating, and that's the thing that's really pulling me away from this game a little bit yeah. because of that. And I had the same issue, I think, when I've done the resistance one, same kind of thing. Get in here, get to the checkpoint in the middle of the camp without being detected. Sure. I think I got what cleaned all the area up. I think all that was left was two of the AI, is it the mortar shell like tank things? Yeah. And that's all that was left. And then the other side of the base, and I went to go to my checkpoint and I saw a cage. And inside was a hostage. So I let him out like a good person I am. I'm free, <laughs> I'm free. He started running around and he got detected. The next thing, mission failed. Yeah. And that was like two hours. Uh. And, and that's the bit that I, th I find the grinding of it. Sure. is kind of the uh puts me off a little bit no absolutely so as you mentioned obviously like um on a on a raw we got the uh the nerve gas that's around yeah unfortunately you, you can't sort of get into the area unless you've got a gas mask yeah, that's and true. it's not like a gas mask that lasts forever no it has a time limit it goes down progressively so you have to find either the is it the gas mask station yeah it's like it's a, a refill sort of, like, station right it's like a refill but you can also yeah. take out like some of the sentinels or the wolves and nick their masks which i have trouble picking up and taking from them in the first place it wouldn't let me do it yeah i had that glitch too where i was only at two you have a max of three filters you can hold and as i'm hovering over this other filter when i'm sitting at two i'm expecting to go to three nothing's happening so i was just kind of man just more of that broken point that we keep talking about right yeah and that's the problem is because like i take someone out i'm getting like critical and next thing <laughs> i know i'm trying to peg it to the to the uh the station <laughs> to, to get the gas mask without being detected as well yeah. and that is frustrating as well but it's like i like the concept of the idea of the gas filter sort of like changing it the gas mask yep but again at the end of the day it's still the same game that's really fair. they just put like a green green mist and and you have a gas mask but the concept of the game is exactly the same as all the other missions i think personally yep i don't know how you feel about that this no it's very true right it's still a very rinse and repeat method um to me i, I don't mind it i like that's the part of the grind in the loop that i like is to be able yeah. to go in there and you know i use my handgun for 90 percent of the mission so i'm able to get in there and sneak around and pick people off and use that I got the Sam Fisher ability, right? So I've got the fourth echelon thing going. And that's my play yeah, style. Well, never, so. Yeah, sorry. I never finished that Sam Fisher one, so I never managed uh. to get that. I think I was still stuck on that hostage one. That's why <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why I kind of gave up on, the, on that one. And it was just like, yeah. 
too much time. <laughs> yeah, but it's still, again, it's more grocery time, which never is it really a bad thing. It's still sticking with the formula. If you change it up too much, then fans are really going to kind of harp and gripe about it, right? But they've introduced yeah. the gas, and that's the newest event overall. Yeah, do I like it? I think it's decent. I don't think it's a solid yeah. expansion. I think it's okay. So, Steve, yes. why don't we wrap up Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Amber Ruin event. For me, a good time. Just not the greatest time. The abilities of Thatcher, Ash, and Finca just aren't plausible. They, they, just, they just don't work. And it's just baffling yeah. to me how you launch this event and that stuff doesn't work. Fortunately, dude, I got... Uh, I'm gonna give it a 5.5. It's just not working the way it's supposed to. Yeah. Well, I'm a little bit different than you. I mean, obviously, I don't play Rainbow Six as much as you do. And yes, I know the characters, but to me, they're just like another AI for me. Yeah. Which, bear in mind also, the first two events then never had AI, I don't think. So I was grinding by myself. It's only recently they bought out the AIs for help, yep. like the extra teammates. Um, but for me, you know, I'm, I'm going to give this a seven. I do like the game, but to be honest with you, with Division 2 and the same kind of thing, a bit more faster pace. So I'm going to stick with the seven. Nice. With the new addition of toxic gas, gas masks, and appearance from three celebrity guests from Rainbow Six makes this game fresh and current but it's still the same as the bugs and glitches have never been fixed since launch. Hey guys, this week's level up, we're talking about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is one of my favorite games right now. I'm playing a ton of it. But we're going to kind of talk about specifically the skill tree here. And it's a big one. So it's definitely one of those things I wish I kind of knew a little bit more about before I kind of progressed as far as I did through the game. So I wanted to highlight the top three skills in each skill tree in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Let's jump right into it. AC Valhalla's skill tree is massive. It's broken down into three sections. Bear, Wolf, and Raven. Bear being melee, Wolf being ranged, and Raven being stealth. And the first one in Bear I want to talk about is Stomp. You're going to get it early on, but it's definitely one of the handiest abilities. You just jump in. Anytime you stun an enemy, you have the ability to run up, press in the right stick, and you actually do a Stomp maneuver, which usually takes them out completely or does a ton of damage to them and still allows you to get one or two shots in before they even get up. So Stomp is definitely one of those bear abilities you want to get early on. Dual Swap is the next skill in the bear tree. This one's really handy because there's so many weapons in AC Valhalla to choose from that every once in a while you're going to want to switch on the fly and the ability to press the right trigger and click in the right stick and do that mid battle is really handy because depending on which weapons you have and which hand they're in you do get different attacks so it's always nice to kind of customize the way you're playing these battles out. And finally, the last skill on the bear tree I really push for is all the way up on that far left side, and it's heavy dual wield. You find so many great two-handed weapons in this game, it's hard not to want to use both of them at the same time. So the fact is, this allows you to use a two-handed weapon in both hands. There is some modifiers to the stats because you are using them single-handedly, but the best part is, is the fact that you can pair something like a spear and a two-handed axe together, and just the damage is absolutely devastating. The first skill in the wolf skill tree is Battleground Bolt. I found this one to be the most handy, especially when there's a ton of enemies on screen at the same time. You do do a lot of raids and castle sieges in Valhalla, and it definitely makes it really handy to be able just to pick up a downed enemy's weapon and hurl it at another enemy, usually doing a kill shot or definitely doing a ton of damage. This is one of the more handy abilities on the wolf skill tree. Next up on the wolf tree is Grit. 
This ability and skill allows you to regain some of the health from the last hit you've taken if you can jump back into combat after taking that hit and manage to land a few melee attacks. I found this one to be really helpful during those battles of elites or bosses. When you take those big hits, if you can get back in there and get a couple melee shots in, you can recover that big hit, which is definitely helpful because you don't have to use your rations. This is an ability that takes a little bit of time to get to, but if you can get that skill unlocked, it's definitely worth it. Sprint Attack is the last skill in the wolf skill tree that I thought to be really, really handy to use. I use a spear often as a primary weapon, and paired with this skill, it gives me the ability to do a far lunge and attack an enemy from distance with the spear. It allows me to keep my distance, especially in those tricky boss battles. So I found that Sprint Attack was a really handy, useful skill, and you can get it pretty early on in the wolf skill tree. Over to the Raven side. These focus a little more on stealth attacks. And let me tell you, it's all about the timing in this game. And you're going to want to get this skill early. Brush with Death. This one allows you with the perfectly timed dodge right before an enemy attack hits you will actually slow time down and allow you to kind of whatever direction you dodge in allows you to maybe get to the side or behind the enemy you're attacking for a couple free shots. Brush with Death is definitely one of the skills you need to be looking for to get early on in this one. The next skill in the Raven Tree is Breakfall. I found this one to be really handy because you know what, I jump off things by accident in this game all the time and take a ton of fall damage for it. So when I discovered Breakfall, this actually does an auto roll for you on any large jumps as soon as you hit the ground so you don't have to do it yourself or think about it. You're still going to take some damage but it's definitely reduced. This is just one of those handy skills that you can just always have on you. Last, but definitely not least, is Chain Assassination. This is an awesome skill to have. After completing successful assassination, you have the ability to press right bumper and actually throw an axe at a close enemy. And let me tell you, this does a ton of damage. If not, it takes them out completely, and it looks super cool. This is a skill you just have to have. Well, there you have it guys those are my top three skills in each section of the ac valhalla skill tree it's huge there's a ton of customization here these are the skills that i thought really worked well for my play style it's always up to you to decide what you want to do with yours but i think these are definitely ones you should be looking at early on Although it's not a new release, I went solo on this one to take a look at Pamela. Today I'm here to talk about a game on Steam. This one is Pamela. Now it is kind of under known and not a super well broadcasted game, but I took a look at this one and I just want to touch on a few things that I think are interesting and maybe just a few things that I think are slightly disappointing about this game. The game starts you off very humble. You wake up out of a chamber, you're not sure what exactly is going on, but you are free to explore and hopefully craft yourself some items for survival. That's how I'd classify this game, is a survival exploration game with the emphasis being heavily on survival and exploring this decrepit station and discovering kind of what happened to the, the people that have lived here and you know what's going on in the world surrounding. It's a very dark game with a lot of very mature undertones that is probably going to be lost on the younger gamer you sort of have to spend a lot of time in this world to really discover what's going on 
And the draw is always finding little scraps, whether it's audio logs or computers to read from, to piece together exactly what happened in this station. And the news is grim. As you push through the station, you come across several different kind of biomes or different areas that were useful at one point. There's a lot of residential area, there's the cryogen lab and the just different genetic scientific experiments going on. And there's a lot to explore, a lot of corners, a lot of destruction that has happened in the environment that kind of impedes your progress through the area. You have to find what's going on, but not only that, you have to survive against some of the infected people that are still around in this area. And not only that, but they interact with the robotic caretakers in generally a hostile way. And you are kind of left to either avoid combat and run away or muscle up and face the threats that you come across and there's a little bit of a combat scenario a little a little bit of some options to go through with terms of crafting and forming yourself armor weaponry and useful devices to assist you on your way through the station There are a few things that I, I think could have been worked on just a little bit more and it would have improved the experience quite a lot. There are certain doors that you come across that are locked and you have to hack your way into the computer system through these mini games that are generally challenging. And there's just a little bit of bugginess associated with that. And it's very unfortunate because there isn't a whole lot of action to be had while you're exploring and these are some important points but it's lost a little bit to just the the kind of cluttered environment and the difficulty interacting with the different systems i feel like it wasn't explained very well or explained properly in general how to manipulate some of these computer items and how to unlock doors and areas there is a lot to do with repairing certain systems that I feel wasn't explained and that can leave the player kind of hopeless, unsure of what they're doing or where to go and it causes a lot of backtracking and a lot of exploring the same area kind of over and over again to discover what you've missed. And sometimes that can be rewarding but I found it personally kind of frustrating in this setting. I very quickly wanted to get out of certain areas and explore more visually stunning areas of the station and it was just i was kind of boxed in by these issues in addition to that there is a little bit of clipping issue going on with any of the combat um, a lot of the motion when you're running through these areas some of the visuals get a little distorted and i think that's just an optimization issue because the game otherwise is pretty competent. I've spent a lot of time exploring this, this game and it would be easy to get lost explaining some of the details, but I'm going to try and skip over that. In summary, it's a very interesting idea. I think the premise behind this game is strong. It's a beautifully crafted world when it's light, when it's dark, there's lots of eeriness and mystery to it. The story I wish was a little bit more emphasized and maybe a little bit more direction on top, but it is deep, it is interesting to get into, and it was revealed in a pretty nice manner that left me feeling rewarded for exploring the station. Uh, again, I wish the combat was a little bit worked on, uh, maybe a little bit more emphasized in certain parts, and backed off in others, but I think that's a stylistic choice for this game. I was pretty satisfied, and visually, this game looks great. So that leaves me with a 7 out of 10. 
Pamela has a very strong premise and a great environment to explore. Unfortunately, the lack of direction and sloppy combat hold this title back from being a smash hit. The guys were live this week over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the official ITG. And while well, they're checking out COD, how they do, let's find out. Hey guys, this week Adam and myself are jumping back into the world of Warzone and we're checking out the new Rebirth Island. This one gets pretty intense, so make sure you watch to the end. Let's check it out. Right there. Ah, Stand up again. Stand up again. Wrong, probably. Watch his leg through the wall. I got one bullet left for the sniper. Tagging him a couple of times. Enemy LCX taking the tank. Oh, no way! I missed him. I hit him. I've yeah. been hitting him this whole time. Every time he turns around, he's dead. Jeez. Oh, he's up. He just jumped off the water tower. He's under it. Oh, they just got a drop right here. Yeah, there was a couple guys that would grab that drop. Right here. There's a guy right below us, he's coming into the yard, I think. Fire cellar. Yeah, there's a guy below me. Oh good. Enemy UAV overhead. Enemy UAV overhead. Yeah, right below me. Be advised, friendly precision airstrike inbound. He's right next to me. Oh, nice. Loser. Yeah, there's a sad guy landing over now. by you. Yeah, I got one. Oh, his boy's down Ooh, on the roof. Yeah, jump down here and get a something to get this guy off the roof. Thank you. 
what someone just hit him with it. Those guys are still in that hut now. Right, I can't use this. Enemy lost track of you. You're safe. Gas is closing. Get to the new safe zone. Target marked. Call for fire. This is Tracker 3 1. Good copy. Strike inbound. There's God guys man. on the roof of bioweapons. Where do we gotta go? Ugh. I'm dropping down. You wanna go down and around? Or go now? Need high caliber round. Need high caliber round. Sorry, bro. I don't have, don't have any for you. <laughs> he wants us to buy some. Oh, I've got, uh, where is he at? I got munitions. I got munitions, actually. Uh, oh, need this? Use bottle. No worries. Oh, oh yeah, there's guys in here. You can out, yeah, they're on me. Yes, he's moving. Take it far. They're down. Oh, I ripped him. He's got no armor. He was hiding somewhere. Close one. No. Move it. Target Feeling right better here. already. Oh, he's chasing somebody. Target right here. Yeah, thanks. That's a dink. <laughs> he likes his. Uh... That'll wrap up this week's episode. You can always be a part of the show. All you have to do is go to insidethegame.ca or hit us up on Discord. We're there. You can submit your clip and end off our show. This week, we've got Puma with a sneaky little shot. One bullet, two targets. Check it out in Rainbow Six Siege. Fam, thank you again for watching. We'll see you inside the game. You must recover the diffuser. The diffuser has been secured.